Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are very excited to have this guest on the pod today. He's from Allison, Ontario. But Tom, I think you can agree with me. He's done his time in Northern Ontario, playing for both the Sioux Greyhounds and the Sudbury Wolves. He was drafted in the fifth round of the NHL entry draft by the Dallas Stars in 2021. Please welcome the captain of the Sudbury Wolves, Jacob Homer Holmes. What's going on, buddy? Not much. How's it going, guys? <laughs> We're doing good, but uh, good, first good. question. First question I got to ask you, um, do a lot of people call you by your first name? Like I, like we barely know you. I call you Homer already. Yeah, no. Um, usually only mom when she's mad if I'm home in the summer. It's, <laughs> like, it's always Homer or Holmesy. It's never Jacob. So uh, <laughs> I've, I've gotten used to it. Uh, I love it. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, boys are coming back here for, from a road trip. Boys are getting started on another little homestand here Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. How are the boys feeling uh, after that week? I feel really good. I I think we definitely left some points on the road that we could have picked up. Um, that one in Kingston hurt in overtime. But, you know, we went into Ottawa on Sunday and played a real good uh, team there. Yeah. We, we, we all know that. And um, Yeah, I think, you know, we're feeling really good about the week coming up. Um, everybody's really buying into Derek's new system and, um, you know, slowly chipping away at it. And I think we're going to be really good down the stretch. Yeah. Love it. And we'll definitely get into obviously when Derek McKenzie got on board, but first question I got for you before we dive into the whole hockey career is obviously our podcast behind the bench is season ticket holders. Homer got to ask you, do the boys know when Chimino's in the building and myself like do you guys like do do we need to get your attention more do I need to take my shirt off start waving it around like the, the boys definitely know um, <laughs> you guys are uh, legends and it's you know we talked a bit about Mayhew before the recording started and he he lets us know you, you boys are in the building and it's uh, time to show up or we're going to hear about it all night on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, wow. exactly. All over yeah. TikTok. Chimino's yeah, yeah. progressively getting better with the camera. Like, I, 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 I'm I, like the guy that doesn't touch social media. He doesn't allow me to do that. I just bring okay. the funny content. But he is now upgraded to going on camera roll video whenever you guys get a scoring chance. Because, oh. you know, I'm a, I, wants... I look like an absolute dad. It's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I got the phone out every time there's a, a, a goal score chance. I want to get that content baby uh um, good stuff but, yeah so, well since he's captain chim maybe he'll be able to set up you do a little pregame speech like uh, hey if the boys ever need to get fired up i mean you ask jackal you ask macker <laughs> i'm the guy I, i'm there okay. getting the boys fired up yeah good you, to know you, ever, good you to let know. me know you let me know i will i'll, I'll make sure you stay in touch <laughs> um jacob first question we always we always go back to the start like how did it all start for you hockey what age uh, you know, dive into that. Yeah, I was, um, I think about, I think I was four years old. Um, you know, my dad played junior hockey in Alliston. He played for the Alliston Hornets. Um, nice. So he was my coach kind of growing up just in the beginning stages. And, you know, I just kind of started to fall in love with it. I'm from a farm. So I always had an outdoor rink and, you know, my little, I got two younger brothers too. So, you know, it's something we've kind of always bonded over. Nice. Was there a particular moment for you that, you know, you decided you wanted to pursue hockey, like for a full-time basis? Yeah, it was, as I got older, I always just kind of did it for fun and, you know, hanging Mm -hmm. out with the boys and it's always, uh, you know, a really good time. But when I was more in major band and minor midget, I kind of, you know, started to see myself doing it as a little more serious and, um, you know, it didn't really, you know, click for me until minor midget and most guys it's a little before, but. I, uh, you know, I feel like I was a, a late bloomer in minor midget and, you know, I'm just really lucky how things worked out. Yeah. And you played for YSE growing up, always, always a great hockey club there. Like how was your minor hockey experience playing with them? Uh, it, it's not even like it's minor hockey. They really <laughs> do run it. Like, uh, you know, they got that, they do everything at a St. Andrews College in Aurora. Mm-hmm. So okay. they got brand new facilities and it's all up to date. And Gary Roberts does his like, summer training there with all the NHL wow. guys. So we, uh, you know, you're treated like pros at a pretty young age when you really don't understand it all. And then when you come to junior and you, you know, for the guys that get to experience NHL camp, you really get to see like, Oh my God, that was, that was the real deal. So no, it's, wow. it's, it's a great spot. Unreal. Wicked. Um, okay. Let's get into OHL draft day. 
Um, first rounder, not a big deal to, to the old Sioux <laughs> Greyhounds. Um, Homer, t- talk to us about about the day. What what was the OHL draft day like for you? Very laid back. Um, I didn't want too much family over because I heard horror stories about you know guys <laughs> you know, they get all the family over, they got the suit on, and it's like crickets. So I was like, yeah, no, not happening. So it was just me and the family. We were chilling out, and um, I. You know, I had a pretty good year, so I, I felt like, you know, if you know, if it happens, great. And if not, no big deal. Um, and lucky enough, I heard 18th overall by the Sioux Greyhounds, and I was really pumped just because, you know, I, I've known – I knew about, like, Ryan O'Rourke. Uh, he was, you know, a year older than me. Um, and then just some other guys around the league that always talk about all great places to play and stuff like that. And the Sioux was, uh, you know, really good to me for the two years that I was there. And – Got to meet some characters along the way too, but uh, yeah, no draft. It was pretty simple. It, it wasn't too, uh, wasn't too crazy. So, okay, good stuff. And was like Sue on your radar? Like, did did you think you were going to any other teams heading up to it? Or I had a uh, some pretty good chats with uh, Saginaw as well. So, and Saginaw was the pick right after. Yeah. So I, I'm you know I go over the TV because I'm like okay, you know I chat with these guys a lot. And, the Sioux like picking them like oh like I wonder who's going next or whatever because I played uh, I played on Team Ontario a couple weeks before like right in that can of winter winter games mm-hmm. so I knew like all the guys that were going so far so just wanted to like text reach out and um, my dad actually had it going live on his phone and it was before the TV so my dad goes oh my god like that and like he couldn't <laughs> keep it quiet. And I was like, come on, man. Like, just like blew it right <laughs> the one the time. Yeah. Come that, on. Like, it popped up on TV. So it was, it was wild, but it, you know, it still, it was special. So, yeah, no doubt. Oh, man, that's unreal. Yeah. So, so you move up, move up to the Sioux and you end up with the McKay at the old McKay complex. So, <laughs> I mean, t- t- tell us about, about mo- moving to the Sioux. Like, were you ever up north before? Like, t- talk to us about that. I, I never been to the Sioux before I went for hockey. Um, and, you know, I, I have some family friends that have family from up there. So they all told me that they love junior hockey. And, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't know anything about Macker or his family. <laughs> so he actually sent me a text. Like, I want to say it was about a week before training camp. He was like, hey, hey, man, just wanted to reach out. Like, heard you're living with, I had no idea yet that I was living with him. <laughs> I was like, so, so in minor hockey the big thing is like oh like call each other butter buddy so do i not hit mac with thanks bud yeah this guy lost it, <laughs> he lost it. Came right unglued. so and he never told me that he was like really mad like like sent it to the older guy group chat like he was livid about me calling him bud <laughs> so i get up there and i I'm, i meet him and when i got to their house he was out playing 18 with Jacko and Whaler. <laughs> oh, pretty classic. But, no kidding, uh, yeah. He, he came in for dinner and met him, and that's where it all kind of started. And when I say it was a, you know, a really special spot for me, early on it, it really was. And you know, I can't thank him enough, especially in those early years. Yeah, for sure. W- would you say it was hard to adjust being at a young age, or did you know, McKay make it easy? I, it, would, I, I would say you probably felt comfortable right away. Yeah, no, he, uh, he, he's one of a kind. And um, I, I really saw, you know, a good relationship building with him early on. Uh, you know, he kind of took me under his wing. I, I'd never say that to his face, but he, you know, he did a pretty <laughs> good job. And, um, you know, he, yeah, he made it a lot more comfortable. You're obviously, you're young, you're missing home. Like it is a big adjustment, but mm-hmm. Like I said, like it, it was probably the best possible spot for me to go to in that kind of early on stage. They, you know, they're the best. So, yeah. Sure. And yeah. I actually had the privilege to meet his dad. They call him the Doc. Do you? Did you go? Uh, did you call him the Doc as well, Homer? It's Doc. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not Doc. Yeah, <laughs> now uh, we're talking about adjustments. Did, did you get some adjustments from him on the Cairo bed? Like, uh, absolutely. Was... No, like <laughs> it's. It was a pregame ritual, like me and Cole are right after morning skate, and it's you know, the doc's gonna snap you into two, and <laughs> you there you go. No, the doc's like, the whole family, like yeah. all characters and great people. So it, yeah. it was a lot of fun, and 
you know, our families really hit it off too, which is cool. Good. That's awesome. Uh, what were the go-to spots in the suit for the boys to hang on an off day? What did you guys do? Obviously, from what I heard from Brett, even even McKay too, you guys all hung out. But was there anything else you guys did outside of just chilling? My first year, I wouldn't really know, to be honest with you. I was just a 16-year-old schmelt. I didn't really <laughs> hang out too much for the old boys. But um, last year before I got traded, there was a uh, golf simulator spot. Nice. And we were – we were frequent and it was, it was a good spot. Like I think they had four or five Sims and, you know, it was like restaurant bar and everything. And, you know, all the guys really had a good time. But other than that, it was usually we just hang out at Macker's house and everyone comes over dock, like snapping it around. It's, <laughs> it's a great time. It, it really was, but yeah, nothing early on. You obviously play golf. It's like here, yeah. right. You golf till you can't. And, yeah uh yeah after that it was more just at guys houses yeah good stuff so big golfer (laughs) like i i i am i'm into golf i suck i'm horrible (laughs) like i'll be the first one to tell you before you hear it from anywhere else um but no i i i I like getting out and having fun and yeah yeah um you know i when when i'm playing like a lot in the summer i I'm all right, but no, it's it's really touch and go whenever I got only once a week. And yeah, 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 yeah. work in progress. I got you. Home. It is, yeah. it is for sure. It's not, <laughs> it's not not hot, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Um, all right. So moving in, uh, obviously, wh- while you're with the Sioux, you, you get drafted um, to Dallas. I mean, from OHL to NHL draft day, were any other people? Were, did you add a little more to to the roster at home, or did you keep it the same? <laughs> she was. I, I kept it the same. I was like, okay. I, you know, I had, I had good, I had good luck with uh, just the fam. Um, so, and it was a tough year. It was a tough year. So I knew I was like, okay, this is, this is going to be lucky because I didn't play. I didn't get to show anybody what I got. Like it's anybody will tell you that going through that year. So just kept in my family. Um, first round goes the night before I knew that wasn't happening because mm-hmm. I just, just wasn't clicking. <laughs> yeah. It's just way out of uh, way out of reach. And I had a lot of buddies that went, so I got to talk to them and stuff. And they're like, "Okay, well, good luck tomorrow." I was like, "Thanks." Woke up, started early. It started at like nine o'clock. So I was glued to that couch from nine till probably about ten thirty, and then I was like, "Okay, I gotta stop watching this because I'm just yeah. gonna drive myself nuts." So I got up, I was moving around and it felt like the picks took forever because of the five minute, they can take a little time out and, you know, trade or whatever they got to do. Yeah. And, um, I, I said, I finally said it. it, I think fourth round came to a close. I was like, all right, I'm out of here. I went for a drive. I had to get out yeah. of the house. I was going yeah. nuts. Yeah. And my dad, he's like, I, I gotta do the same. He gets in the truck. We both <laughs> go separate directions. <laughs> So he he actually makes it home for two picks before Dallas in the fifth. I'm still out on this drive. All of a sudden, I get I'm, my Apple Car Play is just going nuts. And I'm like, you're kidding me! Like I just missed getting drafted to the NHL, and I did. I was on a drive, and I wasn't even. I didn't see my name. I was on a drive clearing the head, and um, you know, I I went home pretty quick after that. So. And no then, kidding. Yeah, no, it was nuts. We we were it's not like we were mad, we were just like, okay, we can't sit here and start this TV no, for a longer. Yeah. Or yeah. me and him are gonna start brawling it out on the <laughs> living room floor or something. I have no idea. That's and, unreal. Uh, then after that, all them all my family and really close friends came over and it was nice. it was a really good night. We had a lot of fun. So ah, that's no, awesome. It was good. Yeah. That's an unreal story. It was was Dallas like on the radar? Like, did you get a call at all or or nothing? It just out not of the blue. Dude. Not at all. Yeah. That's wow. that's the thing that still has shocked me is like they didn't even. I did a survey for them, yeah. which usually they would send out these surveys so they could get your phone number and then call you. Yeah, I I sent them the survey. Never heard from them. I was like, okay, like no no big deal. Um, and then yeah, they didn't call me before the draft, and Jim Nail called me after. Yeah, I got drafted. And that was that was pretty cool. So yeah, no doubt. Yeah. That's sick. You're and, probably, and, you know, yeah. you were probably pretty smart in that survey, though. Like, yeah, must have been good in that survey. Yeah. <laughs> you, talk, you talk a big game. 
you do. <laughs> and uh, no, like it, it was more just the NHL Central Scouting one, right? Because that's right. Yeah. the baseline. Like everyone does at the beginning of the year. I think that's where they probably got a lot of stuff from. And yeah, like they don't tell you who, what, anything. It's just you know they pick you, they call you, they say congratulations. We'll see you in two weeks. That's what yeah. it was. That's is that wild. one? Is that the one where you bump your stats? Like you're like six eight two sixty. You know, like you, <laughs> yeah. You're like, well, if, if you if you're six if you're six one and a half, you're definitely six two, <laughs> and you are a, a lean mean fighting two hundred. I love it. So, I love yeah, it. That's good. Unreal. Yeah. And and what what was the first camp like uh, in Dallas? eye opener for sure yeah I, um the first camp how it kind of went was they did development camp right before traverse city tournament mm-hmm. right there in september and then the, you jump jump right into training camp so i went for development camp and i i actually i i know quite a few guys that were drafted the year before to dallas and also the same year as me like i'm, I'm pretty close with wyatt johnson what a year he's having yeah and then uh logan stankoven who was Pretty nice close too. to making that spot <laughs> as the second 19 year old. Yeah. Um, I played with both of them at U17 Team Canada. So that was, you know, it was pretty cool to be able to go to the same spot as them. Mm-hmm. So, first camp, um, I go to Traverse City for the prospect tournament. And all I'm hearing from like, uh, you know, all the older guys that I talk to in the summer training is like, okay, like, she's a bloodbath. You got to be ready. And I'm like, oh my God. Like, so you're in there shaking. I'm so yeah. nervous. I'm probably 180 pounds soaking wet. And I get blown up first game, like big eye opener. And I, I got better at every game after that. But it it really is. It, that's not even a welcome to the show thing. Like that's, you know, I'm at rookie tournament and these guys yeah. are going to put my teeth through the glass. <laughs> <laughs> that was wild. But yeah. uh, it no, and then I went back to Dallas. I was lucky enough to go back for training camp, and that's when I just take I took more of just a learning approach rather than trying to like show off and be the guy that oh like you know. So I you know I asked guys for tips and you know got pretty close with um, you know a lot of the guys on the farm team as well, and you know really just made the most out of the experience. And then uh, same thing goes this year when I went there. It was uh, you know pretty straightforward but you're learning something every day yeah which no doubt. is really cool yeah man that's wicked unreal yeah. um bringing it back now um to obviously the big moment that landed you here uh and said you get dealt um from from one northern city city to the other how, how did it all go down like how, how did you find out uh you you were moving what are you laughing um, jim <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I may have some. Ba- I may have some background. That's why I'm. I'm laughing during. The- <laughs> during the- well, it's uh, it's actually a bit wild. So we play on trade deadline night, and all the older guys. Well, I shouldn't say older guys. All the guys that are like kind of hanging out with. They're like, oh, like you know, the suit was good. We had a pretty solid team. It was yep. like, okay. Need a few. Need a few pieces here, and we can make a bit of a run out of this. So the guys going into that game were playing Windsor, and they were sick. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. going into that game, I remember Cole, we're driving to the rink on the way to that game, and he's like, man, we just need, like, one more piece. And I'm like, yeah, sure, that'd be great. Like, I'm not really thinking <laughs> anything. I like, just kind of snap it around. So we go and play that game. I think we lose 10-4. 10, yeah, 10-4, 10-3 or something stupid. Like, I'll just get <laughs> – Walked right out of the <laughs> Zamboni door. Like, it wasn't even close. I just probably dashed five. Like, it was <laughs> So, I, we go into the room. I'm fucking very, very just not, like, into it. I'm like, there's no way that just happened. Like, dash five. Um, we go back to the house, and we're sitting there, and we're playing cards. Just trying to take, some, take our minds off things. And Doc, yeah. Doc's dealing with the cards. And... <laughs> Cole gets a call and it's like, hey, like, hey, Dean, like John Dean, the head coach, and he goes, Cole, you got to, uh, you got to get the boys together tonight, and you got to get Homer to call Rafty, the GM. And Cole is like, are you serious? You're gonna make me <laughs> go downstairs and tell that guy that's playing cards and having a good time 
that he has to call his GM on the trade deadline night. And, oh. Yeah. So Cole comes down and Cole is like, he's not in tears, but he's like, he's like, you got, you better go. So I went up and called and they were re- they're really professional about it up in the Sioux. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's a hard thing, especially, you know, I, I really enjoyed my time there and um, everything else, but I went up and found out that I was traded for, for Tomer who went, ended up in the Sioux and I knew Tomer a little bit before Yeah, and me and Boudreaux were coming back to, Sudbury and so I go downstairs and Cole's looking at me and I go, Well, I guess you got your piece. <laughs> we were talking about before the game. Come on. Oh my <laughs> yeah. god. Yeah, no, but it it uh it really it was it was a benefit in my case and I think for you know Thomas as well. He you know for went sure. there and lit it up and I came here and I felt like I really found a bit more about myself though who I'm going to be as a player and, you know, all the, all the laughs and experiences you have at McKay's will always be there. So it's, yeah. uh, but no, it was a wild night. It, yeah, you got to get all the boys together and you got to get Homer <laughs> to call her after you. Like, yeah, <laughs> all right. Deal. Oh man. That's wild. So, yeah. So how was that transition going from, you know, one Northern Ontario town to like the next? I, I'd assume similar. Very. Yeah, yeah, it's you know, hard work in mining and steel towns. They're very, very similar. <laughs> yeah. They love junior hockey. Um, I and I, you know, I'm a country kid, so I, you know, I love it. Um, the one thing I, I, I always say this to people here. I'm like, there's so much more to do here, mm-hmm. and they're like, there's no chance because yeah. they're all used to like going down south, like into Barrie or Newmarket or Toronto. And yeah, I'm like, no, like I'm telling you, this is there's a lot more to do here. And, it's um yeah no transition was pretty pretty straightforward and um you know again lucky lucky it happened yeah and did you know any of the players when you got there or was it a completely new group like how was that for the first time walking into that dressing room it, it was pretty new i knew uh ethan larman okay really well and i knew landon mccallum uh and then mitchell weeks i skated with him in the summer so okay. I I knew a few pieces coming in and they they definitely helped like just massage me and Boudreaux into like you know hanging out with the boys and yeah you know routines and stuff like that but oh like coming in and I remember walking in the back door and they're all like sitting there chatting in a group me and Booty walk in and just crickets and then one guy gets up <laughs> and shake our hands and then everyone else did and I was like oh this is gonna be wild yeah no kidding damn no, that that's crazy. <laughs> That's wild, Homer. Oh man. Um, so now, obviously, this year um, is a big, big one for the boys. Obviously, you get the call to be the captain of the Wolves. Capo, yeah, you here gotta we go, love Jen. that. You gotta love, go. round of applause for Capo. Yeah, you gotta fuck, love that. Here we go. Homer. Yeah. How yeah. how did you how how did you find out? And and did you have a feeling it, it was coming your way? I I remember coming in last year, and Dunks was the coach, and you know I had a. I had a good relationship with the coach, with Dunks and Storts and Mox, all the guys around the bench, and I had a good relationship with the boys. And I felt like I came in, and you know, I'm not much of like a vocal leader. I just kind of come in and you know do my thing and yep. try my best at whatever's going on. Um, so this year, I just you know tried to follow the same footsteps, and um, you know, I didn't really have a feeling. I went I went away to Dallas and you know stayed in touch with the boys, and um, you know when I got back, it was it was a exciting time and it you know it really is an honor it's uh something pretty special and you know it's our 50th year and we got an opportunity to really do something here so yeah it's great i'm unreal i i don't know if you have any insight or you can share but like you know we've been talking about the green jerseys and the black jerseys coming back is there is there any intel like or will there be a, a jersey coming back at all do you know homer i don't know for sure which one or if you know like what the real plan is to be honest yeah. we we've all heard that there is going to be something new with the jerseys uh, yeah, next year and sick. they've really left it at that because you know i think they want to make it a surprise as much as they yeah, can. yeah yeah he's yeah, really yeah. smart look at him he's got the dallas <laughs> that's the captain treatment. answer right yeah, there that's yeah. like you know if, if you, <laughs> you let me have it i got a big mouth the next thing you know all Sudbury knows what's going on <laughs> oh man no. good stuff good careful. stuff Homer. yeah no doubt um all right Moving on, this year, like start of the year, 
uh, obviously you guys have been been through a lot to to kick off the year. A lot of stuff, a lot lot of moving parts happening. Um, obviously Dunks leaving and now McKenzie comes in. Like how how was it knowing that it was uh, it was Derek coming in and how the boys uh, deal with the change? We, you know, we we took it as you know it's kind of time to wake up. To be honest. Mm. Um, it, that's something that you never like to see as a guy lose his job over something like this. Um, yeah. And we took we took it to heart because we were like, okay, like we're the guys doing it on the ice, and you know we didn't we didn't help his case at all. So we knew that there was an opportunity with Derek coming in and you know a uh, new voice and a new leader kind of, and it was just time to you know bear down and listen and try and take in everything that he's learned. And so far, it's been unbelievable he's done a great job and um, he's building relationships with all the guys and we're we're having fun and working hard you can't really ask for much more yeah no. and how has Derek been there like been since he's like gotten there I saw that one video on this, the Wolves social media of his first practice and it Buzzing. looked like everybody was like shit in their pants <laughs> yeah like it's it's um you know, that's the first coaching change that I've ever been through in my career. Yeah, and right. I, I think all the guys, to be honest, so you don't really know what to expect. He, come, he comes in and, you know, he's used to coaching in Florida. A <laughs> little, little bit better skill. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. there's some play likes, but that's about it. And we were like, all right, well, you know, if you can't skill it, you better grind it out and yeah. just work hard and enjoy it because he really has learned so much going through his career. And yeah. done so much as well. So, um, you know, the forwards, you know, really enjoy picking his brain about face offs and stuff, especially the centerman. And, you know, just, you know, his door is always open also. So it's been, it's been really good for us. For sure. Yeah. Wealth of knowledge for sure. And I mean, and, and new assistant coaches too, Dorval and, and, uh, and Richardi, how those boys been? Really good. They're, yeah. they're characters too. They're funny. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. He, they have been since, you know, they, right when they got here at the beginning. So it's been an adjustment for sure, not just for us, but for them as well. Like, yeah. it's a whole new group. And, you know, it's um, it's something that was exciting for them, and they, they love it. I know, yeah. you know, we get to joke around with them, but, you know, you listen to them because, again, you know, that's the bench boss, and they got a lot to uh, a lot to teach us as well. For sure, for sure, awesome, good stuff. Um, let let's talk about the old barn now. So you've gotten to play on both sides, both sides of the of the old barn, yeah. the sub yeah. arena. And I mean, how give give us both perspectives when you hear the horn and the wolf. Let's start with the when you're a Sue Greyhound coming in, and then when when you're a Subby Wolf. Let's hear it. Uh, okay, so Sue Greyhound, it's a wash. You hate it. <laughs> like it, you're coming in there and. It's, it's, oh my gosh, we're here again on another day trip. <laughs> we're about to get run through the end. Well, this is back when I played anyway. Like, when, yeah. you know, Macaulay was still on the team and, <laughs> yeah. and tough, <laughs> tough guys over there. So, um, you're just like, oh my gosh, like, we're going to get run through the boards here for 60 minutes and then get a long trip home, same yeah. night. And then on the other side of things, being the home team, it's, it's one of the best environments in the league. It really, it really is. Uh, our crowds have been really, really, you know, fun and into it this year. And, you know, we've had a great, great showing pretty well every night, even on Sunday games, which yeah. you can't really find too much in the league two o'clock in the afternoon. Usually people <laughs> got something better to do, but um, <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's been awesome. And awesome. yeah, it's, it's complete opposites. Like I, yeah. I remember coming in dreading it as a greyhound, but now I, I love it. I love it. That's, that's awesome. And yeah. and what's the what's the thoughts on like the wolf? Like, uh, do guys on the wayside hate the wolf, and and do the boys love the wolf on the home side? Home side, we love the wolf. Yeah. Um, a wayside, I can't really. When, when I when I played in, in the Sioux, it, it it didn't really take too much of our time, but like we we did have it go across our bench quite a few times because we used to get lit up. All we, oh, did. we were, especially my first year, you guys had a really good team in Sudbury and we, we were young and just trying to figure it out in the Sioux. And we, you know, we, there was a lot of sad nights there. Just crickets on the bus after. So. Oh, um, 
Homer, next one I got for you. Like, the jersey number 74 seems to be a number you've had basically all the way up through hockey. Any uh, yeah. significance behind that number? Um, it was actually for my first year of going to AAA. Um, I was young, and favorite player was Sidney Crosby. So 87, he did that with his birthday. And I thought I was pretty slick, so I was going to do the same. And, you know, <laughs> July 4th my birthday, so that's what I kind of went to. But it it – it's kind of grew on me a lot more than just that. And, uh, you know, I, it's something that, you know, it was pretty special to me and my family. So that's what I run with. I love it. it. Yeah. Um, next one I got to before we get into some general questions, what's, uh, what's the next few year few years looking like for you? What do you, what do you, what do you say? You know, it, it's, um, it's one of those things where it all depends on, you know, how hard I shoot the puck and how fast I move my feet, I guess. I don't, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, you, you got to take it one day at a time. Yeah, for um, sure. You can't really yeah. be thinking too much into it. You know, uh, love to be back here for away next year, obviously. It's yep. you know, a great spot and another really solid team next year. Um, and then, you know, I'm hoping to, you know, see if Dallas can work out at some capacity. It's a great spot and, you know, I like – I like all the staff that are involved and they've, you know, reached out as well. And um, it's, you know, yeah, I'm just going to say take your day by day and see Love what it. kind of options are open. So, yeah, no doubt. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, what's off season training uh, like for you uh, back in alley? Uh, it's, you know, pretty, pretty straightforward. I mean, I, yeah. I, this past summer I worked on the farm. Um, yeah. So I'm in the gym pretty early in the morning like six or six thirty, I get her going. Um, I, I've been with the same trainer in Alston for, uh, four years now and, you know, they've, they've been great. They've, you know, really helped me take my game to where I want it to be. Um, and then, yeah, off season, I would go work out in the morning, go to work, skate if you got to, depending on what day it was or yep. what time and then back to work or go back home after and, just kind of repeat through the weekends and then, you know, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I'm in the gym about five times, five times a week, about yeah. five times a week. So awesome. Good yeah. stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Staying dialed. I love it. Um, wow. something like that. It, something like that. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. One more question, uh, before we move on to our rapid fire, uh, questions here, where did cup of Joe come from? Uh, cup of Joe, yeah. uh, Joe Rangers well, coffee segment. Here, right? how, how did this all come about? So Joe is what we call a professional snapper arounder. He can, <laughs> he's, he's, he about, snap it, eh? oh my gosh. <laughs> and what an eye opener he's been, but, um, he did that in Mississauga. So, Mississauga, they started this cup of Joe with Joe thing. And it was his trade part. Like he loved it. He was all for it. He'd have all the boys on. They, so he's like, okay, I got to start it here. And so he got in contact with Noah, our video guy, and um, got it all kind of set up. And we have fun with it. I mean, there's a big list of guys that want to get on it, but who knows what it's, it's up in there. You know, that first episode was. I wouldn't say top notch, but about as close as you can get. <laughs> oh, it was good. It was good. <laughs> and then, you know, he just came out with another one, but we have fun with it. He's he's a great guy and has been a really good piece. So Unreal. Are are we on this list? Like did you slide us in there? Yeah. If, if, if not, no. yeah, make make it work. Yeah. No, I'll pencil you in and see where it goes from <laughs> Wait, there. He knows where to find you guys. <laughs> yeah. I love that it. That would be actually hilarious. We should yeah do a little Let, uh or get, get Lab, Chimino, let's make it get, happen get Chimino yeah. his dream his dream what is it you want a, a dream job i was gonna say you get a tour of the wolves room jim have you ever gotten that? i yeah i've seen the every every sub homer there's no the there's room. no more die hard than this guy okay i'm telling you no i, I love no, it there, the no, there's there's yeah there, there's more than me but uh but yeah no Definitely, cup of Joe. Let's make it happen. We uh, we met. We told Joe, let's make it happen. Uh, it'd be unbelievable. Uh, okay, well, I'll yeah. I'll, uh, I'll go talk to him tomorrow, and <laughs> you know, if I if I can get his catch his ear on a game day for two seconds and uh, <laughs> see what he thinks, we'll yeah, the boys on. that'd be awesome. Oh man, that's jokes. Good stuff. Um, one more before we go. Actually, this mic'd up segment that Noah's got you got uh, at, oh, at practice yeah, got you question, going. Jim. 
like are the boys fired up to wear the mic or like are they dying to wear the mic or they like they don't really care look at this this is the captain speaking here yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) it's so like some guys are not a chance don't bring it anywhere near me and then other guys are like yep right in there ready for it and then there's other guys that are just saying yeah you can put it on me but i'm not gonna say too much yeah and you know the guys that aren't don't want anything to do with her there's definitely a reason we got some <laughs> lippy, <laughs> lippy ones out there and they they know they'll slip up and there won't be much content left at the end of the day so <laughs> um, no it's it, we have fun with it though like everyone yeah. else will be like oh like booty last year I, this was like second week i was here i got the mic and um you know he comes up to me and he goes you're right in the mic like he's I knew he was going to do it. And he goes, get rid of that butt fungus that you had there. <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me, man? Oh, of course man. that one gets added on. Like, yeah, no kidding. Just hook, line, sinker. Nailed it. Like, <laughs> that is oh, unreal. I was livid. I was so uh-huh. mad. And then I was actually, I, I wasn't even there for his mic'd up day, so I couldn't even get him back. Oh, but, man. Yeah. That's too good. You have to find another way. Oh, that's good. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, all right, we'll move on to our fast five here. Homer, it's five rapid fire questions. Whatever comes to the top of your head, let it all rip, right. buddy. We'll snap it around. We may have to change it to the snap in it segment here. <laughs> snap and segment. The second so, yeah, snap all, right. all right, Tom. Okay, Homer, first one. Dream travel destination. Anywhere in the world, where do you want to travel to? Oh, uh, I'm gonna go Hawaii. Okay. Nice. I know Hawaii. McKay and Jacqueline, all the suit boys are big snack guys on the bus okay so what's your best on the road snack it's actually one that i haven't been able to find in a while and it's uh the cadbury maynard's mix you know those marvelous mixes oh okay and oh yeah like make a bulldog break its chain like it's the best thing in the world (laughs) like that's what that's what i need those and uh you know i asked me and macker got me on something too is we go into gas stations. You'd stop on the way home or whatever, and a whole jar of salsa and a whole bag of Tostitos. And I've, <laughs> I've done that ever since. There you and go. Eggs out the back. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, that's funny. Okay. Yeah. Uh, your favorite away rink? Favorite away rink? Um, all the guys love to play at the Bud in London. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty good too. I really like. Um, I like going playing Barry too. Going home, a lot of family come to watch. But uh, my favorite would have to be Guelph, actually. Probably okay. I really like okay. Guelph's rink. It's a sick bar and good location too. Yeah. Okay. Nice. But, nice. So I, I'm excited for this question here. Okay. So you're about to, you know, a team party, maybe whatever the case may be, and you're you have to hop on the mic to do a little karaoke. What What's the song? Oh my gosh. Oh, well, there's so many. <laughs> this is this is just every day in the dressing room, if you can believe it. I just, <laughs> um, one of them would have to be, and this is just because this guy was in town not too long ago. Summer of '69, Brian Adams. Yeah, yeah, that like, is oh, that's a what great a one. Concert. Did you boys go? No, no. I heard it was unreal though. It was what good. a show. Yeah, he was he was dynamite. I. <laughs> I was listening to him for three weeks straight after. Like, it, was, <laughs> it was great. So, no, I, I, I'd go to that. Yeah, we'll go there. That was okay, awesome. absolutely. I like so. that answer. That's and you got to know somebody. You know all the words too, right? You don't want to yeah, sure. stumble over like an idiot. Yeah, you don't want to yeah. embarrass the, yourself. Depending on what you're idiot. doing, you got you got to be careful. So, yeah, if there's girls around okay. you want to impress. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I hear you, Homer. Yeah. Um, favorite Sudbury two-parter. Favorite Sudbury slash Sioux restaurant. What's your favorite in the Sudbury? What's your favorite in the Sioux? Uh, uh, Sudbury. I love the dogger. <laughs> the dogger is just a classic. It's a huge dog yeah. house guy. Like, yeah. You can't find anything like it. It's unreal. I had it tonight, <laughs> it's actually. After practice. <laughs> it up. Um, and then in the Sioux, oh, there's an uh, Italian restaurant, Fratelli's. On Great yeah. Northern, and it's yeah. it's top notch. Yeah, I, I'm trying to go with you know places you can't just get anywhere. Like it's those two are, yeah. For sure. I love it. 
Oh yeah. man. Awesome. Good stuff. Good yeah. stuff. Well, listen, Homer, thanks for coming on the pod and, and snapping it around. Uh, <laughs> with us. That, that was awesome. Um, I, yeah, absolute blast. Yeah. We, uh, we'll be there to keep cheering the boys on and, uh, and hopefully it's a, a, a deep run for the boys and you guys turn around here. So, uh, so again, best of luck. Thanks for coming on. Awesome. Thanks for having me boys.